The next voting method I want to tell you about is called plurality with elimination. And basically what we do here is every voter will vote for favorite candidate, but we want the winner to have a majority. And let me remind you that majority does not mean the most votes. Majority means more than 50%. Okay, so we want our winning candidate to have more than 50% of the votes, and that will happen with two candidates in the race unless they're exactly tied. But with three candidates in the race, it's possible that no candidate would have a majority. So what do we do? Well, one thing you could do is you could drop out the candidate with the fewest votes and then hold a new election, runoff election. Uh, but runoff elections are expensive and time consuming. And so what we would prefer to do is have the voters rank all the candidates in the first place, just as we do with the board account. Okay, so that means that we'll get a preference table. But we start in analyzing the preference table just by looking at the first preference votes. If, if one candidate has a majority of the first preference votes, then that candidate is declared the winner. If no candidate has a majority of the first preference votes, then we will eliminate the candidate with the lowest number of first preference votes, and then the others will move up in that column. Let's see how that works. Do an example. Still working with that uh, preference table that we used in the board account case. Okay, so I remind you this is the preference table that we had for that. And under plurality with elimination, remember we're only going to look at the first preference votes. Okay, so we look up on the first row to see how the voters rank these candidates. Okay, so A has 7 plus 3, total of 10. B has 9. C has 6 plus 5, which is 11 and D has three. Okay, so in looking at these first preference votes totals, uh, it's clear that uh, D should be eliminated from consideration. D has the fewest number of votes. Uh, the others are still in contention. Though. So now we go back to the table and now we look at this column here. This is the, the, the one column that where D was at the top of the column. Now the question is, who should get D's votes? Well, I think it's clear that those voters prefer, if they couldn't have D, they would like to have A. So that means that basically we move A up to the top in this column, and then A gets those votes. So after D is eliminated, then we'll have A with the 10 original votes plus the 3 that it got from D. B still has 9 and C still has 11. Still, no one has a majority. So what are we going to do now? Well, now we're going to have to drop out B. Okay, so B gets eliminated. We go back to the table. And we see, well, there's this one column that has B in it at the top. So again, we move the uh, voter's preference up to the top. And A will get 
those nine votes. So after B is eliminated, then we just have two candidates left, A and C. A has the 13 that had before plus the 9 they get from B and so that gives 22 C has 11 and so A is now the winner Okay, and that is given out here in the notes.